So now we go to talk about the characteristics and reactions of alkaline. To start with, what is base and what is alkaline? Previously, we did say that okay, base actually is a chemical opposite of acid, and then it will react with the acid to give salt and water only. Okay, so base actually is an opposite of the acid. Okay, and most of the time, okay, all the metal oxide and also metal hydroxide are base. Then what is alkaline? Look at this diagram, then you will know that. Okay, base actually include all the things that can react with acid to give salt and water only. And an alkaline is a small part of the base. This alkaline actually we are uh, a special kind of base which can be soluble in water. Soluble in water. So we will say that alkaline is a soluble base. Okay. So uh, it is a base, but at the same time it is soluble. But for uh, most of the base, actually they are insoluble in water. Okay, so you just imagine, or right, for metal oxide, we can have like copper two oxide, we can have like iron three hydroxide. So these kind of oxide actually they are insoluble in water. You just imagine, can we remove the corroded part of the copper using water to rinse it away? Of course, no, because for these metal oxide, they are insoluble in water. But some of the metal hydroxide or metal oxide, they are soluble in water. For example, you are very common. We know that we have NaOH and KOH. They are soluble in water. And then we have sodium oxide and potassium oxide. So group one metals, okay, actually they formed soluble base. And then we also have calcium hydroxide. But pay attention to that. Calcium hydroxide is only slightly soluble. Slightly soluble. That means not completely soluble in water. Okay, so a small amount can dissolve in water. And also we have ammonia. Ammonia is an alkaline gas. This one is an alkaline gas. It can dissolve in water to give alkaline solution. So uh, for alkaline, actually it's a small part of base. Base in general will describe the things that can react with acid to give salt and water only. So question now is come. If I have like calcium carbonate, it can react with the acid, okay? But is it a kind of base? The answer is no. Because calcium carbonate react with the acid, they give salts, water, and also carbon dioxide. So from here, we see that okay, it is not only salt and water, so therefore calcium carbonate is not classified as a kind of base. So uh, in our daily life, do we have alkaline? Yes, okay, we have window cleaner. Window cleaner, actually, we are using ammonia. Okay, ammonia solution. We dissolve the ammonia gas in the water to give ammonia solution. And then we will have drainage cleaner and also oven cleaner. So all these things, okay, they are also alkaline. Normally the one that we use is sodium hydroxide, also call it caustic soda. The main purpose of having these alkaline solutions, okay, to clean this part, okay, because they can help to remove, help to remove grease okay so uh like uh, the fingerprint on the window uh, on the window so when you touch the windows okay uh your fingerprint will leave some grease on it okay and also uh, in the kitchen and an oven you have some oil or expression on the top or on the surface of the ovens okay or just the stoves so or uh, the window cleaner uh, no the sodium hydroxide can use to remove grease in this part Okay, and in alkaline, okay, normally we're using sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lime water, just now we mentioned it's calcium hydroxide, and also we have ammonia, aqueous ammonia. So ammonia, it can be in gas state, it can also dissolve in water to give aqueous ammonia. So just want to remind you lime water, okay, it is a saturated calcium hydroxide solution. That means that uh, the solution have dissolved the maximum amount of calcium hydroxide. It cannot dissolve any more, okay. So this word is very important, saturated calcium hydroxide solution. So uh, you can see that right here, okay. So for most of the alkaline, they are on a compound. So therefore, they will have generally higher melting point. So if we have a pure alkaline, that means no water, in general, they are solid. We do have an exception. That one is ammonia. Ammonia is a gas. 
while the others, okay, if they are pure without water, they are solid. This is so different, okay, from the acid because we know that for acid, okay, HCl is a gas, okay, and then HNO3, H2SO4, pure form, they are liquid. And we also have some like citric acid, uh, citric acid, uh, ascorbic acid, and many more. So for those, they are all solid state. If there's a pure acid. So or in alkaline, most of them they are solid. Okay, except ammonia. So the characteristics of physical property of alkaline, first of all, it tastes bitter. So uh, when you like bathing, showering, you got some soup or shampoo getting in your mouth, you taste it. Well, you know that that is it tastes bitter. But remember, don't taste it, okay? Uh, second one, uh, if it is in dilute case, dilute case, okay, it is uh, feel slippery, okay? So it's just like having soap on your hand, okay? But if it is concentrate one, okay, concentrate one, actually it is also corrosive. If you remember in form two, we put the chicken fit into the uh, sodium hydroxide it or uh, just um, uh, flash okay it will just redden and then will peel off and things like that that is corrosive even if it's in concentrated or uh, if it's in concentrated uh, solutions so number three okay turn red limits paper blue okay remember last time we mentioned if it turned red the paper turned red okay it just indicate you all very dangerous that is acid so the paper okay if it turned blue okay from red to blue okay that indicate okay it is alkaline so if you put a blue limits paper in it, what happened then? Blue limits paper, it just remains blue, okay? And then number four, okay, it can conduct electricity in aqueous form, just like alkaline, uh, just like acid. They can also conduct electricity because they have mobile iron in it, okay? They got mobile iron, so therefore they can conduct electricity. So we also call these uh, uh, alkaline as a kind of electrolyte, okay? So uh, for chemical properties, okay, I always remind you, okay, there are four kind of reactions, 3A plus 1M. What is 3A? First of all, it can react with acid, first A. Second one, it can react with acidic gas, okay? And lastly, okay, the third A, it will be ammonium ion. So 3A, acid, acidic gas, and ammonium ion. Okay, and for one, okay, that would be 3A plus 1M. That M, okay, is metal iron. I have to emphasize is iron, okay, remember not metal. So if you have like magnesium add into the acid, yes, you have reaction because we know that acid can react with metal. But if you have metal like magnesium adding into sodium hydroxide, sorry, there is no reaction. This is metal, okay. However, if I have like magnesium iron, Okay, or magnesium sulfate solution, you add it into NOH, that will be the magnesium ion, ion form. Then in this case, we will have reaction. Okay, so 3A, 1M, memorize it well. So on uh, this video, we're going to talk about the first two. The first one, react with acid, general equation, base or alkaline, react with acid, they give salt and water easy okay so sodium hydroxide we have hcl to give sodium chloride and water for example we put copper dioxide into our sulfuric acid okay so we'll have copper sulfate and we also got water so if we have like uh iron 2 hydroxide and put it into nitric acid so we will have like uh feno3 bracket 2 Okay, iron to nitrate, and also we got water. So uh, this one is one to two. So one to two. Okay, so right there you have to multiply this one by two. So each of the OH will gain one H to form water. So therefore we have two H here. We got two H two O. So it will be like that. Okay, react with acid basic. Second one, okay, it will react with acidic gas. In your textbook, you find that they will say react with non-metal oxide. In general, the non-metal oxide, they are acidic. For example, you have like NO2, SO2, CO2. You also have like Cl2O, okay. All this in details, okay, you will learn it later on, okay. But uh, for this chapter, chapter 14, we focus on carbon dioxide only. Okay, so for carbon dioxide, it can react with this is acidic gas. Okay, it can react with alkaline. So the first alkaline that we use is calcium hydroxide. Remember, calcium hydroxide is also called lime water, right? So you learn it since form two. 
carbon dioxide react with lime water to give milky solution. So what is this milky solution? Actually, it is calcium carbonate. So you say, oh, Mr. Wong, it's so difficult to remember. No worry. Just consider this one like an acid. This one like an alkaline. So if this one contribute calcium, so what kind of salt it can ca contribute? So remember, for the CO2, it can dissolve in water. It is a weak acid, so use reversible arrow. They will give carbonic acid. So the calcium will react with the carbonate to give calcium carbonate. But it happened this calcium carbonate is it's insoluble in water. Insoluble in water. So therefore, uh, you'll find it in a test tube. When the calcium carbonate form, have many small white dots form on it. The more and, and more and more you'll find that the whole solutions turn milky. So this is why it turns milky. It is because of the presence of insoluble calcium carbonate. Okay, but uh, do remember, okay, in form three you did learn this as well. If we continue bubble carbon dioxide in it, you'll find that okay, the calcium carbonate will redissolve in water, and then they will form calcium hydrogen carbonate. So you can have a look here: calcium carbonate react with excess carbon dioxide together with some water in it. Then they will combine and form calcium hydrogen carbonate. This one become colorless again because calcium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water. So therefore, okay, it just look like this picture. Lime water, you bubble carbon dioxide and it, it turns milky. This milky is due to the calcium carbonate. But this calcium carbonate will further react with the excess carbon dioxide and then they will form calcium hydrogen carbonate. So therefore, it will become colorless again. So, Take no time, scan this uh, QR code, and then you can see the experiments on your own. So this part, okay, uh, it doesn't um, have it in your test book, okay? So do remember, put it down in your, uh, in your notes, okay? So uh, the question for this will be calcium carbonate, react with carbon dioxide, and also water. So this one will have calcium hydrogen carbonate. Remember, hydrogen carbonate is just one negative. Okay, so the equation will be like this. Okay, from solid become aqueous, so therefore it will redissolve in it. So next example, it will be sodium hydroxide. We come across this for a few times, so we will remember. Sodium hydroxide. We'll use this one to uh, absorb carbon dioxide and the gas. Okay, so uh, in this case, okay, we don't have any color change. It won't turn to lime. Uh, it won't turn to milky. Reason because uh, sodium hydroxide. We have with carbon dioxide, we got sodium here, right? So we just combine with the carbonate, so we have sodium carbonate. However, this one, you can see that sodium carbonate is soluble in water. So therefore, it will just absorb the carbon dioxide. You can't see it turn into milky. Okay, so uh, no color change, but what can you see? Uh, what can we uh, observe here? Okay, if we put it on the uh, electronic balance, we can find that there is an increase in mass of the solution. It will become heavier. The increase in mass actually is equal to the mass of carbon dioxide absorbed. Okay, so not only uh, sodium hydroxide can do that, actually potassium hydroxide can also use to absorb carbon dioxide. Okay, so this will be the second reaction that alkaline can do. It can react with acidic gas. So, uh, can they react with the uh, sulfur dioxide? Yes, actually they can. Okay, for example, a quick one, okay, will be like this one, okay, calcium sulfite plus water, okay. I haven't balanced it yet, okay. Oh, yeah, balanced already. So, uh, you can see that, okay, it can also react with the acid gas like this way. But um, more and more, you'll learn this in the uh, future chapters, okay. To summarize this video, first of all, base is a chemical opposite of acid. It reacts with acid to give salt and water only. Remember, if you have carbon dioxide, that is not a base, okay? So all the metal oxide and also the metal hydroxide, we consider them as base, okay? And the amount all this alkaline, uh, amount all this base, okay? There is a small amount of alkaline. Uh, a small amount of base which is soluble in water.
they're soluble in water. So we call these alkaline. Some example, we have like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, or sodium oxide, potassium oxide, calcium hydroxide, and ammonia. So uh, so far, you just need to know amount, uh, know this kind of alkaline will do. So many household cleaner, they are alkaline as well. Uh, we'll use those because we want to remove grease. Okay, they are very good in removing grease. Physical property, they taste bitter. Okay, uh, or if it's dilute, it feels slippery. Turn red lemon paper blue and also they can conduct electricity. And for chemical reaction, most important part, okay, you have 3A plus 1M. The one M is metal, is metal iron. Remember, it have no reaction with the metal. The alkali have no reaction with the metal. Okay, so uh, base and acid. Okay, they give salt and water. For good mention, it is a type of neutralization. Alkali we have with the acid gas. It is also a kind of neutralization because they give up salt and water. So uh, two things I've mentioned. One is the using lime water. To test the carbon dioxide, it turned like calcium carbonate, which is insoluble in water, so therefore it will be milky. Okay, remember if it is excess, okay, the or milky or milky or lime water, it will then turn back to colorless. Second one, we use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to absorb carbon dioxide. Okay, or in the setup. Okay, so that's all for this video. Bye bye.